Right guys, so for our first Minecraft computer tutorial, what we're going to do is logic gates. And I'm going to teach you how to build an adder, basically. Um, now, I don't know whether to do a series on how to build a computer in Minecraft, or a calculator, or how or go into detail on how they work. So I'll let you decide in the comments what you want me to do. But for now, I'm going to show you how to build an adder device. But first, I'm going to show you a bit about binary addition. So, first of all, binary is, um, what we're going to do is we're going to build a 4-bit adder. So how bits work is we have your 1-bit, your 2nd bit, your 4-bit, and your 8-bit. And this is how base 2 binary works. Um, if you're confused already, I would suggest you look up tutorials on how binary works, so you kind of understand what I'm talking about. Um, so, pretty much, each bit is going to have two inputs, A and B. We need a logic gate, which can add, which we can use for adding, pretty much. So first we're going to show you some logic gates. So you have your NOT gate, first of all. Uh, so the NOT is an invert, pretty much. Yeah. So I'm going to call this the NOT gate. Next we have the OR gate. Which is very, very easy. And when one input is on, or two inputs on, you get an output. But yeah, these are different functions which you can use for a computer. This has nothing to do with a calculator, in this case, really. These are more to do with computers. And AND gates. Well, to be honest, an AND, these gates can be used in any way, some contraption, really. But computer-wise, um, they're very useful. For example, with an AND gate, you can make um, you can make a combination lock. Bush. It's also used for computing too. And it's called an AND gate. So it only turns on if you have both inputs on. You have an a NOR gate, which is an OR with an invert. And I'm just going to throw my torch. Okay. NOR gate. You have a NAND gate. NAND gate. You have an XOR gate. And this is an XOR. I'm going to show you how to build two adders in this video, by the way. And then finally, you have an XNOR, which is definitely used for more complicated adder circuits. I usually use XOR adders. Uh, and then you add an invert on the end. There are better designs than these, but there's loads of designs for these logic gates. I'm just showing you the simpler ones. X NOR gate. So these are the main gates you will be using for computing. Now the first thing what you want to do is find a gate which you can use for adding. So you need a gate with two inputs first of all. So not the NOT gate. The NOT gate is really used to com be combined with other gates. For example, an AND gate plus an, a NOT gate equals a NAND gate. An OR plus a NOT is a NOR. And that's really the, only, the main use for the NOT. It is used for a lot, lot of stuff outside of computing too. It's such a simple but efficient gate. 
the or can do 1 plus 0, but when you try to do 1 plus 1, no. So the, the or is definitely a no, but we can use the or, however. You'll see that later. The and, if you do 2 plus, two, if you do 1 plus 1, you get 2. So if you put on two inputs, you invert the output. And this is very important for later. Um, when we find out how to build an adder. A NOR is mainly just um, a logic gate used in an ALU, which I'll explain in a different video because it can get very complicated. And that goes the same with a NAND. So I'm going to ignore these two gates for now. And I'm going to ignore the X NOR as well. So the gates we're going to talk about are the OR, the AND, and the XOR. So, if you use an XOR, you'll find out that it's, you might say, isn't it kind of useless? Because if you do 1 plus 0, right, you get 1. But if you do 1 plus 1, you get 0. So where did that... Where did, the, where, did, where did it go, you know? Wouldn't the end is kind of different, because when you have two inputs on, you do have that output. And also with the OR, you know, you have that output. But with the X OR, this is a mysterious gate. Because if you have two inputs on, it kind of just goes missing. And you might say it's kind of useless, but the X OR, there's an OR in the name. Um, X OR gauge because the OR is actually made up of two single input OR gates. Uh, I'll show you right now. This is an OR gauge. Here's another design. This is an OR gate because if you have one input on, you have an output. If you have another input on, you still have an output. And that is perfect. Maybe one of my special. But what we can do is we can get rid of this that input. The secondary input. And now it's a single input or gate. Which is useless because it's the same as a straight wire. You know, they're, they're the same thing. So a single input or is useless. Now, what I want to do is, what we're going to do is we're going to build two single input or gates next to each other, like this, and we're going to combine the outputs. So now what we have is an OR, 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 1 is still 1. Now. The next thing we can do is, for the XOR to work, we need to turn this off, right? That's how XOR works. You have one input on, you have an output. You have another input on, you don't have an output. So what we can do is we can create a carry, so that when these two dusts are on, the horses are off, which means the rest one is off, we can actually do 1 plus 1 because of this torch. And this is an AND gate. This torch is an AND. Um, so it's a secondary output, pretty much. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the color of this real quick. So you can kind of understand. Uh, how do I do this? Uh, I'm going to move the torch. Um, because it's not, it does not say that I can't move the torch in, right? So, now what we have is we have our secondary input, our AND output, and we have an XOR output. So the XOR gauge has two outputs. Um, so what I'm going to call this is... I'm going to call this XOR output slash one and then I'm going to call this and output slash two 
So now we have 1 plus 0, which is 1, and then 1 plus 1, which is 2. And that's why the AND gate is so useful. And the reason why this works is because when you have two inputs on in a normal AND gate, uh, the output inverts. So that is why it's so useful. So combining an OR with an AND, if you have one plus, if you have one input on in an OR gate, you're gonna have an output. And then if you have two inputs on in an AND gate, you're still going to have that output. And that's why combining them, which gives you an X or, is going to give you a good adding function. So what we can do is, we're going to stack this. Um, so, I'm going to get rid of the levers, and then find out how to stack it. I'm going to get rid of this output too. So, um, actually, no. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to put it into another XOR gauge. Because what we're going to do is we're going to make something called a carry. And you'll see what that is in a few minutes. Because what we need to do basically is we're going to have this torch in the middle, right? We need to get this torch to the output. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to carry it along the XORs, because we're going to need a few XORs for this. Um, it'll make sense when you see it. And then we have our second XOR. And then that's going to be our output. And this is bit 1 still. All of this is bit 1. So now we're going to stack these, which I think we can do uh, by doing this. I don't know if you've rolled that. Let's try this. Stack tree. Okay, what we need to do is we need to expand one. Expand one stack tree. And that works. So now we have. So what we have now is we have bit 8, bit 4, bit 2, and then bit 1. And they go up in doubles because this is base 2 binary. Um, binary can be pretty confusing, um, so I might explain it in an, another video. But, um,. Basically, how computers read numbers is humans have base 10. So, what that means is you have 10 digits which people use. You have 0 and then 1 to 9. So, you have 0 to 9. And then each number is based on its position. So, for example, 10 raised to 3 is 1000. And then 1000 multiplied by 9 is 9000. So you have 10, raised to 3, is 1,000. 1,000 multiplying 9 is 9,000. Um, so you raise it to the position and then you multiply it by the digit, in the, based on the position it's in. And then you do the same thing again. 10 raised to 2 is 100. 100 multiply... It was, what was the number again? It was 5. It's 500. So right now we're left with 9500. 10 raised to 1 is 10. 10 multiply 6 is 60. Um, raised to basically means uh, to the power off, by the way. So if you know math, you should know that. And then 10 by 6 is 60. And then you're gonna this stupid thing. This type. So 9560. And then finally we have 10 raised to 0, which equals 1. 
because anything raised to zero is one, not zero. And then one multiplied four is four. So you're left with 9,564, which is the same as on the side. So that's how humans read numbers. Base two basically is where computers only use the digits zero and one. So they don't use two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, they're used in base 10, in decimal it's called. Um, this is not decimal, this is base 2. So again, you have your positions, bush. Now you have um, only 1s and zeros. So, how do you figure out what number 1, 0, and 0 is? Well, 2, you do, it's the same thing. So 2 raised to 3 is 8. 8 by 1 equals 8. And then 2 raised to 2 is 4. Um, 4 by 0 is 0. Um, 2 raised to 1 is 2. 2 by 1 is 2. And then 2 raised to 0 is 1, 1 by 0 is 0. So what you're left with is 8 and 2. 8 plus 2 equals 10. So that means... So that means um, zero, 1010 zero, one, zero equals 10. Base 10. Yeah, you know, that's gonna get confusing. So yeah, 1010 equals base 10. Equals 10. And then if we do it on this as well, uh, you know what, I'm gonna do it here real quick. And then you have, of course, um, you have one, two, four, and eight, and then, um, so the number was one, zero, one, zero. So you have one, one, zero, one, zero, it goes left to right, and then eight, plus 2 is 10. So that is how computers read numbers. Um, very different to decimal, with what, which is what we use. Um, it's kind of just a simpler version, really. It's broken up um, into bits. We only have 10 digits, we have 10 digits, however, which is actually quite a lot. Um, there's also hexadic, I think there's also um, base 16 as well. And then you use letters, so it goes 0 to 9, and then it goes A to F. And when F is into 15, so it gets even more confusing. Anyway, back to the adder. Um, so that is why there's the bits go from 1, and then they double, because it's space 2. So, now what we want to do is 1 plus 1. So if we have 1 plus 1 right now, again, as you saw earlier, where does it go? Well, this torch is on, and the rest of the torches are off. So what we can do is we can move this torch up, and then we're going to have... We're going to power these lines again, so the signal doesn't go true. And then we're going to make our carry. So I'm going to make our carry on line, line wall. And then we need to hook it up to the next XOR as well. And then we're going to put it down into the next XOR. And then block off the signal. So now 1 plus 1 is 2. So we have 1, 2, 4, and 8. Now... 
Um, and let me just continue the line. So we continue the whole line. And then we hook it to all our XORs. Because you kind of get the gist now. Um, that's how we hook up the XORs to the carry. And also we disable, um, we keep the XOR from going through and causing massive disruption. So it's easy enough. And then hook it to all the XORs. So now 1 plus 1 equals 14, which we don't want. So what we must do is we must block off the signal from carrying across on all of them. Like this. Done. And then we have this, which is going to be overflow or carry out. I'm going to call it carry out. So basically, this adder can hold up to 15. Say if we do 8 plus 8. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to hook it up. There we go. Oops. There we go. Now we hook it up. So, if we do 8 plus 0, we get 8, of course. But if we do 8 plus 8, if we didn't have this, then it would just the answer would be missing. But we do have a carry out, which shows that you know our calculation didn't just disappear. We actually do have our answer saved in the carry out, which is what it's called. So this is basically 16. It's also used in subtraction as well, but I won't get into that yet. So we have a carry in. Oh, sorry, a carry out, which means we must have a carry in as well. Which we're gonna make right now. And then block it off. Um, the carry in is used for subtraction, so you don't have to worry about it too much right now. Um, just for kind of recognize it. And yeah, that's a simple adder. Um, so you can do 1 plus 1 plus 2, um, which is 4, and it's not carrying properly. And the reason is that I have these on. That's not the reason. Why on earth is this not carrying? I want to figure this out, you know. Hmm. It's not carrying properly. Okay, that's a bit weird. Alright, that's really weird. Um, we have a bit of an issue with my adder. Oh, the issue was that I didn't hook up the XORs to the carry. There we go. So you get 1 plus 1 plus 2, which is 4. If you want to do now, by the way, these inputs are called A and B. So, for example, this is 1A, this is input A, this is input B. They are the same thing, they don't make any difference. They're just, this is what they're called. Then input A, input B, input A, input B, input A, input B. And that's the names of them. So you get the gist. If you want to do 6 plus 6a plus 3a, then you type in 6a and then 3b, which is 9. The difference between a and b actually, there is a bit of a difference, but it's for subtraction. With addition, they are the exact same. Now, the problem with this adder is that it's so simple. It's so easy to build and understand. Because all it is, is your XOR gate um, hooked into a carry line, um, which hooks into all your XORs. And that's it. That's, that's all it is. There's nothing else going on, really. Um, but the problem is the speed. Now, if you know about redstone, you may notice there's certain ticks. Um, for example, a redstone repeater is four ticks. 
or it can be one tick, which offers delay, of course. So, um, if I have 20 of these on on for on on for delay, and I send a signal true, look how long it takes. And that is because it is delayed by four ticks, and each tick is a millisecond, um, or 0 0.1 seconds, I think. Um, now, this basically uses ripple carry, this adder. Um, so you're using a lot of torches, which means that each torch takes one tick. So you're adding about two ticks every every bit. So say now if the first bit is four ticks, the next bit's gonna be six, the next bit's gonna be eight, the next bit's gonna be ten. And this is really bad when computing. So that is why this adder is really not good. Especially if you're looking to build a good computer, this is not a suitable adder. So I'm gonna show you a bit of more of a compact adder, which is faster. It is bigger, but it's way faster, and it, I'm pretty sure in every bit is the same amount of ticks. And that's how I'm going to end this episode. Um, so I'm going to do it really quickly, and I'm going to explain what I'm building it as well. And I'm going to color code it. So we're going to use lime to do our first XOR gate. So let's do our XOR. Um, I'm just going to build and then you'll see. So this should be an OR gate first of all. If you have one input on, you have an output. One input on, another input on, you have an output. Perfect. Now, what we need to do is we need to make this an AND gate. So what we can do is we can put torches here. We need to power this redstone dust. Um, so we're gonna do a dust block, and then on the inside of this block we're gonna have a torch. So now we should have an XOR. One in one position, zero, one, you don't put it's an XOR. Brilliant. Now we're gonna we're gonna bust this and then put it into another OR. this. Uh, I'm going to do this for now. And then we're going to do another one underneath. So it's the exact same thing. And then, of course, we need our end game, which are two torches, block, dust, and then a torch on the inside. Now, next what we're going to do is we're going to bus Oh, I forgot to color code it. Damn it. Um, okay. I'm gonna color code this real quick. Just so it makes sense. Um, I know you probably have this done anyway, but just in case. You know. So the yellow is gonna be our second X4. Uh, I see it. That. Um, oh yeah, torch. There we go. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to bus the X4. We're going to bus that. Um, so we're going to put a repeater fist. Lock. Dust. Wait. No, wait. Hold 
not anything if I did this actually. Um, uh, let me think. Yeah, I figured it out. So, what I've got to do was uh, I'm gonna break this real quick. So, first of all, what I forgot to do was I forgot to add our second X4 gauge. Or a second and game. Um, which I'm gonna do right now. I'll be yellow, of course. I've completely forgot to add this. There you go. And then our two torches. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna carry the f um, our, our second bit to the next adder. So here's our second bit. Um, we're gonna carry it to the next adder. Um, so we're gonna here place a repeater to a block. Dust, block up, block up again, block down, dust, and then we're gonna have our two torches like that. So now that's gonna be our carry, and then we're gonna for now we're gonna just place. A redstone lamp. So now what we have is I think that's it. So we have one, we have zero plus zero, which is zero. I'm gonna label these by the way. We have our XOR output and we have an AND output now. Uh, so this is an AND output that I made. And of course, with an AND output, if you have two inputs on, you get an output. So that's why it works. So this is a way more compact design, um, and I'm going to stack it in a second. I'll show you how to copy and paste, or have, no, not copy, not pop, not copy and paste, but how to stack it. So yeah, we have our XOR output, and then you have your AND output. Okay, and then one plus zero is 1, which is our x or output, and then 1 plus 1 is 2, which is your AND output. And that's that. That pretty much is it. And then when we stack this, which I'm going to try at least, no promises I'll be able to get it, but I'm going to give it a go. The signs don't really matter, to be honest. Oh, wait, we don't need this, actually. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, I'm going to go with these two positions. And then stack three. No, definitely not. We got decision, right? Three. Nearly got it. Not quite. We need to do a block higher for this one. Sack tree. Boom. And then we just have our levers. And then the carry. Does this carry over properly? Where did I do my carry again? I need some blue wool real quick, I need to fix the carry. I don't think I stacked it right. No, I didn't stack it right. But that's okay. It's alright. There the torch is, that's where they need to go. And I think that's it, you know. Yeah, and that's your carry out. So you have carry out, and then of course this side you'd have a carry in, which can actually be here, you know. Yeah. There you go, and that is your full adder. Um, so what I do recommend is you go and you, 
you go search up what binary is exactly, if you're still quite confused as how binary exactly works. And in the next tutorial, what I'm probably going to do is move towards ALUs. Um, so basically what an ALU is, all it is really, it stands for Arithmetic Logic Unit. And it's basically combining addition, subtraction with logic gates, with logic functions to be exact. Um, so that is why, so at least I won't have to go over logic gates again, because I already did today. So I'm going to show you how you add not, how you add nand, and, nor, or, etc. So that's today's tutorial. I showed you how to build two adders. Um, this is a more compact adder and a faster one. Um, with all tick with all bits the same tick speech and it does work by the way so if I do 2 plus 2 plus 1 I will get 5 and you get the gist already it is a fully working adder and I'm going to show you how to turn it into an ALU which is really getting into computing um, so I'm going to be talking more about computers than calculators for a while um, but I can always you know I can always do it in another series, talking more about calculators as well. And that's about it. Very wordy video. Thanks for watching. And um, we'll get into part two very soon.